Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Tom Myers. I'm the uh, head of Applied AI at StructionSight. I'm a recent addition to the team. I joined in August of this past year. I'm very excited to be there. I'm, I was, when I joined, I was employee 18. As of this past month, I believe we just crossed 30. So uh, we're on a, quite the, the curve and the path. Uh, we were founded by a couple of very passionate members of the construction community in California whose background and history was really around solving real problems in that space. Uh, they originally started out in the laser scanning domain, so applying laser scanners, selling laser scanners, using those. They built a company called Rhythm, uh, which was uh, post-processing and handling of those laser scans. And they have recently, uh, as of about three years ago, focused on instruction site. So what we really do is document images of construction sites, therefore the name. Uh, we use a camera much like this. I'm going to ask everyone to participate in the presentation. I'm going to take a picture of all of us. So this is a handheld Insta1 um, 360 degree camera. It'll take digital stills of very high quality resolution, or it will also take videos. We actually leverage it mainly for videos for uh, one of our products and mainly for stills for the other. I'm going to get it set up. I will take one. Everyone say cheese on three. One, two, three. There you go. Um, so just like that, uh, we allow a site to have the uh, documentation done for a construction site as they're going around and building out the site, going from planning, going from excavation, going to actually putting walls up, pouring concrete, doing all the things we just saw PCL talk about. We enable them to document and keep a history of what's happening for that. So our, our goal and our, our company focus is around documenting, organizing, and understanding the reality of a real construction site. So I will give a brief introduction of myself. Uh, the main problem I'm going to talk about tonight is so many pictures. Uh, you can imagine uh, across 170 different projects, you can imagine the number of photos that are needed to document that, the amount of video, the amount of evidence that's gathered over the course of a project to understand what's happening. So that's really driving the, the main goal and the path of what we're doing. What we're actually solving is the understanding of those images, the gathering, the, the managing, and the understanding eventually. So myself, I'm Tom Myers. I really started into this area uh, coming from the 3D reconstruction side. I started a company 20 plus years ago uh, called Point Cloud that did um, 3D reconstruction focusing on e-commerce. So I've eventually moved into other areas, uh, applying it to medical imaging, applying it to law enforcement, done machine learning specifically applied to body camera videos and security camera videos. And most recently, as I said, as of August, focusing on construction site documentation. So I really enjoy the challenges of dealing with very, very large streams of images, very large bodies of evidence, if you will, and then gathering the understanding that's needed in those at scale. So doing that in a, in a capability and in a fashion that lets you understand without having bodies, looking at each thing, manually reviewing, manually understanding, organizing, labeling, all of those things. Because the reality is we have far more images every day, every minute, than we do people to organize them as a world, um, especially so in the construction domain. So uh, just as an example, uh, so many pictures. Our customers just in January captured 1.4 million of those little 360 degree camera pictures. And that, for context, was a 36% increase over December. So the rate and the scale is staggering, the amount of data that's available. The more you can leverage that to gain value and to gain business understanding at the site, the better off you are as a business, the better you're able to manage what you're doing and tell the story of what's happening at your site day after day. Um, so the way to do that, to find the answers to things that they're, they're asking, the questions that they're looking to understand from those images, did this build match what happened in the plan? Did the build change from last week or from the week before? When did the change happen? So it's really about documenting not just the site and images, but it's documenting the change of the site over time in images as it's built out into a, the manifestation in the real world of it. So how do we do that? We start with making it very easy to capture. We take our little camera. We allow the users at the sites, whether that's the 
Um, whoever the field person is that does that, as they're getting to a certain stage, I was today at the Cancer Center here in Calgary. We saw the, the, the progress that they're doing. They're getting to the point of being able to put up drywall or preparing to put up drywall. But before they put up drywall, they have to have a way to understand what's happened behind the drywall. So they walk through, they take a picture with the camera just like this, and they look at what's happening between the frames, between the steel frames, between the, the gaps in the wall, if you will, the things that will be covered up by the drywall and the paint, and they document that at different points in time as the plumbing comes in, as the framing comes in, as the electrical comes in. They document it all so that you can understand what's actually happened at the site. So one of the ways they can do that, they didn't happen to do that at the, at the site here, but we've uh, created something called Video Walk, which the idea of instead of capturing still images, we actually let them capture the video. So they walk around, they capture the video, they tell us where they were on the floor plan when they started, where they were on the floor plan when they ended, and then we map each frame of that video into an actual pinpointed location that corresponds to the place in the floor plan. We do that automatically, we do that completely transparently to them, and we do that as a service. So that's something that just magically happens on the, the data that they provide. Um, the walks can be anywhere from five to 20 minutes long, depending on the size and the scale of the site. Um, and the, the goal really is to make that documentation process as easy as possible. That also drives more photos and more pictures and more evidence but it's critical to understanding and tracking what's happening at the site. That's why PCL is interested. That's why it's providing the value. It gives them the information they need to make a decision, just like the IoT does. This is giving the visual evidence of what was actually built, what's happening there on the ground. Just for context, a single video walk on a 20-minute thing could be 2,500 frames or more. So the amount of data that's gathered in a 20-minute session is quite large and quite long for what's there. So it's critical that as we gather this over the course of project life, you can imagine um, the view at the top is from excavation. There's a big hole in the ground, right? That has a drawing, that has a floor plan, that has information about what's supposed to be built there. But today, it's a big hole in the ground. Documenting that and understanding what's happened is critical. That's an entirely different problem set than looking at when the steel framing is in, which the, the middle image there is showing. So you can see the conduits, you can see the concrete slabs on the roof, you can see the pillars, you can see the, the uh, back of the drywall or the insulation. All of those things are there. It's an entirely different view and a different facility than what you'd have in the bottom, which is finished drywall uh, with the door there, uh, with possible partial lighting going on. So each phase of that requires an understanding. So as you understand the scene, you understand the domain, you need to apply the right solution for how to process, how to work with that. Um, so of those 1.4 million images, there was a range. Some of them were in complete darkness. Some of them were down long hallways. Some of them were in the rain outside with a big hole in the ground. As I said, so the robustness of handling each of those is critical to scale. That's really what we're talking about. That's the problem we're solving is doing this at scale, doing this in a real way to solve a real problem at the scale of someone like PCL so that they can actually handle and deal with the data that they need to to solve their business problems. And the more we've done of this, the more we've dug into it, the more it's clear one size does not fit all. This is truly not magic, this is hard work. This is something that requires understanding and applying those tools that you talked about from the, the artificial intelligence and machine learning and computer vision to really process the data, filter down the parts that you need to understand what's actually happening. So behind that, there are a number of different, um, if you want, algorithms or processes that would deal with each of those things. So starting from something like a drawing, it's a very different view than what you would have on the actual uh, build out itself. So as we move through to understand it, we need to understand where each image was relative to the drawing. As I said, if that's a still image, um, we ask the user and we say, please pinpoint in the floor plan where you are when the photo was taken. Uh, if it's a video, we ask for the start and the end, and then we find the rest of the points and the rest of the, the frames that were taken for the video. So what that really gives us is a spatial coordinate where we understand in the domain of the floor plan where the image was taken. So that if you want to come back to that room later and look at it a week later or a month later or a year from now, you can go to that place and go back in time to understand what's actually happened in the build-out. 
So the goal of that is really starting with the foundation of understanding where it was taken. Why is this important? Why does this matter? Why are we doing this for the sites? Uh, in the US, uh, it's expected to spend $1.3 trillion on construction. It's a giant pile of energy and, and resources and human capital that's spent. Of that, roughly $20 billion in one year will be lost on inefficiency of labor, as we said, waiting for the concrete to be poured. Um, tracking production manually on pen and paper is really not good enough for the scale and the complexity of the types of projects. The Cancer Center project was one plus million square feet, 14 floors. It's a tremendously complex and tremendously gigantic scale project. That's something that could not have been built 50 years ago. The intricacy and the detail and the level of complexity of each of the components of that is critical to this digital transformation. It enables new things for society and enables new things uh, for us as a, as a world to build that we couldn't have done before. But it's also terribly inefficient until you have the tools to do it. So on one of the statistics that we had with it is one out of four construction projects will expand by more than 30% due to waste or scope creep. So the idea that what they started out planning to build doesn't match what was actually built by the end of the project. So 30% creep on a project is dramatic and profound. The amount of waste and the cost and the expense of that is profound. That's really what we're trying to tackle. You can't manage what you can't track. And you can't track what you don't understand. So we're trying to bring understanding to that domain and to the area of the construction projects. So how do you do that? You have to start from the domain. You have to start from an understanding of the domain and use the tools that are at, at hand. We did not invent machine learning. We did not invent artificial intelligence by no means. We're applying the best in the industry models. We're, in, or we're applying the best in the industry uh, techniques to do the image processing, to do the understanding, to do the reconstruction so that you can learn from the data that's there. Um, and applying it in a way that is focused and, and aware of the domain. If you train something to look at the cement truck in the security camera vintage, video, that is a very specific domain thing. Understanding what steel framing looks like in an image versus wood framing is a very specific thing. So the more you can understand that difference, you can imagine as you're building drywall out and you put the steel framing in and then you put the, the electrical in behind it and then you put the drywall in front of it, visually looking at a picture of that, it looks like a completely foreign environment from the point when you started to the point when you end it. Understanding the subtlety of that is critical to the domain. You can't answer the question of how far is this, inst how far is this install progressing without understanding what progressing means. So that's really what we're tackling. So an example of that, um, how do you find a wall? You have a panoramic image, you have a lot of them, you have 1.4 million of them. As you walk through, you may see the same place, you may see the same section of wall 20 times in one single capture at one point in time. When you look at that and you think of it in terms of, I'm gonna present someone that information in the most efficient way, the most effective way to represent what that wall is, you have to understand what it is. So one of the things that we've built internally is the idea of tracking a wall segment. You walk around with the camera, you walk around with the video, you capture and extract a given wall or a given wall segment, and then you present a user who wants to review it that specific wall segment with the best possible view. An example of that is the, the image on the left is more of a, a per perspective distorted. You were down the hallway, you didn't see a full image. When you're standing directly in front of the middle of the wall, you get a much cleaner image. Same with the, um, the window at the end of the hallway there. So applying those techniques to extract and quantify that into a numerical representation of how good is this view of the wall is critical. Applying the techniques to do that, to extract out just the part of the wall that matters and understanding what that means in the domain. Another example of that, um, out of those images, you have thousands of images from a walkthrough. When you want to show someone a view down the hallway, do you show them the view on the left or the view on the right? Both of those are coming from the camera. They're from at different points in time. But the blur that happens as you're moving around with the camera is critical to the view that you're going to get. So we really do um, 
an automated process of understanding what is a best frame, what's the best frame to display to that, and letting the user see the one that makes the most effective use of the information that's available, the one that's the clearest, the one that has the best perspective, and the one that can really communicate what they're looking for out of those images. And again, this, the intent of this is not for a human to sit and sift through it. The intent is for the model to understand what's happening and present that. Um, we'll be bringing out a, a new offering into the market called SmartTrack, which is kind of combining a number of these things into one single context. So the idea of taking a project as it's being built, understanding the build out as it's happening, and then tracking and documenting that with visual evidence. So each wall segment of the project, if it's 100,000 square foot of, uh, of a build out, there might be thousands of segments of walls that have a specific specification of how much drywall should be applied, how thick it should be on one side versus the other side, um, the order and the process of when it should be installed so that someone who's de dependent on it project-wise can deliver their part of the project as well. So it becomes critical to the timing and the delivery and the cost and those overruns and the expenses that we talked about get sidelined and get sent off track when the progress isn't happening when it's supposed to be. So SmartTrack is really around taking that knowledge, taking the understanding of the environment and of how a project is managed, and then presenting the information to make a decision about what's actually happening at the site. So we extract the walls, we present the best view, we apply understanding to say, okay, this is a, in the lower left, it is a you know, wood framed in section of wall. The section on the right clearly has had the drywall already applied and maybe some some uh, masking has already been done as well. So following that progression through and following the progress as it happens over the whole course of the, the larger project itself gives you an understanding of what's really going on backed by evidence. So it's not just an estimate, it's not a swag, it's not a guess about what's happening at the site. It's actually from the visual evidence of what's going on at the site from the time it's captured. So what it allows you to do is drive understanding to quantification that lets you make better decisions. So when you understand the images, you can understand what's happening at the project. We take the guesswork out, we back it by the images that are captured by the users on site, on the ground, in front of the wall, and allow them to be quantified so that they can put a numerical value that they can communicate up the chain. So the data itself that's driving the construction project, the transformation of the digital construction industry really is about the data being intelligent. It's showing trends across both the regions, across a specific project, across specific crews. How is crew A building versus crew B? How are they doing for their managing their own schedules and managing their own times? And how are the project teams as a whole handling the project and trending it? So the more you can quantify that, the more you can, can communicate it. That's really what we're driving to and what we're trying to bring to bear is start from the visual evidence, start from the documentation, and move into communication of what the actual status and, and project itself is happening, what the health of the project is, to really drive down that waste, drive down the cost, drive down the expense, and really come up with something that's useful. That's our goal. So. <laughs>